Road and Back Grand Cru. Too short to be drinking shitty beer. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. I have got a beer that I've been wanting to try for ages and I finally saw it on Beers of Europe and they had some in stock. Normally when I go there they haven't got it but they had it in there so I snapped this one up and I've been meaning to try it for ages. It has got such a history and um, it's brewed in a unique way. I'll get onto that in a bit. But... Um, the Rodenback Brewery, they're owned by Palm, and I just tried one of their amber ales, or amber beers as they call it, and to be honest, really didn't do much for me at all. I'm pretty sure this is going to be better than that, and um, I've been researching about this for a long, long time, ever since I saw uh, Michael Jackson, not the plastic-faced kiddie fiddler, the beer hunter. You know the fellow who was doing all the beer critique in, in the in the eighties and nineties and really knew his stuff, but he was enthusing about this stuff, saying how great it was. And ever since I saw that, I always wanted to try some. Never got round to it. Finally doing it now, and to be honest, I cannot wait. So what is Grand Cru? Well, it's brewed by the Rodenbeck um, Brewery, who are based in a place called Roselau, which is in West Flanders. So what is it? Well, it is a red ale from Flanders, and this is the archetypal red ale that you would get in West Flanders. It's a style of beer, basically. But it's unique because it's it's fermented. It does what they call mixed um, fermentation. So it's using... Um, the normal fermentation and but it's also using um wild uh yeasts as well so basically there's a fermentation that takes place in what's known as feeders um they're massive oak barrels that um they're lined up in the in the uh brewery in the Rodenbeck brewery and it just ages in there and what they do once it's aged they mix it with new beer and uh, it's a unique brewing process that you'll only find Rodenbach doing and it's become synonymous with them and they are experts at it but here it is in the bottle um, there is the label the Rodenbach Grand Cru label that has changed it wasn't like that previously um, there is the back of the label I don't know whether you can see that or not but there is a load of Flemish stuff that's on there pause it if you want to read it uh, there's the cap. It's got an R on the front. So on the nose, you've got huge sourness. Um, some fruit as well, some sweet fruit. And it does remind me a little bit of red wine. But it smells really good, and I can't wait to get this in the glass, so let's go. And as I say, it's a, it's a red ale from West Flanders. And these are the masters of red ale in West Flanders. There it is in the glass. Got one finger head on that. One finger white head, foamy white head on the nose out of the glass oh, more of the same that soundness reminds me of a of a hooser it's that you know where they use that you know spontaneous fermentation or basically they leave it out in the open so wild yeasts in the air will come and feed on that bacteria or feed they won't feed on the bacteria they'll feed on the malt 
It smells so good. Let's get it down the hatch. Cheers. Oh, that is amazing. That is amazing. If you can imagine the sourest cherry lambic, that will give you a rough, a very rough guide to what this tastes like. I can feel the sourness on the back of my throat. It's sticking now, but it's really good. I will say, if you're not a fan of sour beer, don't go anywhere near this, you won't like it. But this is the style of beer that I like from Belgium. I love their sour beers, the hoosers and their lambics. They just taste so good. And this is it's one of the best of the bunch. So what you're getting, first off, you're hit with a huge amount of sourness. It's coming from them yeasts. And it does remind me of a wine. Um, there's a lot of, well, I wouldn't say a lot, but there is an element of vinegar in that. But it's not vinegar as you know it. As soon as you think you're getting vinegar, there's a little bit of sweetness that just kicks in and it sort of pacifies that that sort of acidic flavour, if you know what I mean. Um, the best way to describe this is sweet and sour, if that makes sense. And it's really tart. You can feel it on the back of your throat, but in a good way. And I am absolutely loving this. I imagine this is not for everyone, as I say. But if you like your Berliner Weiss, if you like your um, Hoosers, if you like your Lambics, then this you're really going to like. Um, it's one of the best I've tasted. One of the best sour beers I've tasted, I think. It's just got everything going for it. And don't be wrong, there are some great Lambics out there. They really are. The Creek Lambics and the... Um, <clears throat> The, uh, um, the the hoosers that are brewed in Flanders as well. I mean, for such a small area, the amount of good beer that comes out there is just phenomenal. And this is no exception. If you can imagine, sour, sour cherries sweet apples and just an overall taste of vinegar and that sounds disgusting but it's not if you imagine like there's like 10 percent vinegar 90 percent sweet fruit you're sort of getting there but that vinegar that vinegary sour taste it's there all the way through and the mix is good it really is and I am absolutely loving this. It's so complex though. It reminds me of some of the best beers I've tasted in Belgium when I was over there. Um, I remember I had um, Husa on draft and it tasted just like this. It was, to start off with, it was so bitter. But as you swallowed, you got that sweetness. The sourness was still there, but a, a big wash of sweetness came over it. And you think, your first reaction is, I don't like this, this is horrible. And then you swallow and you think, oh, this is lovely, I want to have some more. And it is. And uh, what's his face? Michael Jackson said this is probably the most refreshing beer he's ever tasted. I wouldn't go that far. I wouldn't say it's the most refreshing beer. But he made a good point about it going with food. That will go with most foods. Like... To be honest, I can't stand wine, I hate it, but I imagine that's got similar qualities. It's got that lactic acid. So where you're eating, you want something acidic to help you digest that food, and that will do that really well. And I'm just trying to get some more information out of this, but it's all in Flemish. 
and uh, I'm not really going to get much out of it to be honest but yeah for crafted and brewed in Roselaire, Belgium aged in oak feeders yeah feeders spelled F-O-E-D-I-E-S they're just massive wooden barrels and uh, yeah there's Flanders Red Ale absolutely amazing love it So what's the verdict? Well, I'm a massive fan of Lambics. I'm a massive fan of sour beer. And this has got everything for me. It's just perfect. So I cannot give it anything less than 10 out of 10. For me, this is a beer that I will hunt down and buy again and again because it's amazing. I don't think people are going to like it. Many people will like it over here, you know, with, who haven't got that... You know the the different style of beer they haven't got their taste if you're just you give that your bog standard lager drink and they will spit that out and they will say that tastes disgusting um i'm going to tr give something to my missus now she's probably going to say it's disgusting but i think it's absolutely brilliant that's a 10 out of 10 and i urge you get online if you're in belgium hunt some of this down you will not get a better beer or a better sour beer from belgium than that the Hoosers are different, I think, and the Lambics are different, but this red ale, this to me, is just simply amazing. So 10 out of 10, recommended. And remember, just like this stuff, beer is working class champagne.